Hey everybody, I'm Ted from Tabex. In this tutorial, we will set up a Minecraft server using Notecraft that we will then link to Tabex. If this is your first time linking your Tabex store to your Minecraft server, this tutorial is for you. When on the Notecraft dashboard, we're going to say new instance and we're going to select Minecraft. Double check up here that you got the correct version, either Java or Bedrock. In our case, we are going to use Java. Then at the bottom, we're going to say next. This automatically makes our DNS hostname also tabexacademy.notecraft.gg. And this is what people use when connecting to our server. If we click edit, we have some options. We can change the word or we can also change the domain. Maybe you like notecraft.games more. We can then select our location. In my case, I am going to say Amsterdam. And then we have several different options of either just frameworks like Spigot and Paper and others or complete packs. There might be some mods that you are familiar with. You can just install these with one click. In our case, we're going to scroll up and we are going to use Paper. Then at the bottom, we are going to say create and then we are going to say deploy. It is now deployed, so I'm going to say open. The server is currently offline. Let's start our server and let's first of all see how to connect and if we can connect before we start making any changes. I'm going to copy our connection address. We're going to say OK to the end user license agreement. Currently, we are running a paper server for version 1.20.1. So when trying to connect to our server, we need to make sure that we are running the same version of Minecraft. You can see here on the top left, it says Minecraft 1.20.1. So I am running the correct version. Let's go to multiplayer and then let's add a server. Under the name, you can name it whatever you want. It doesn't have to be the same as what we filled in on Notecraft. So I'm just going to call it Notecraft Tabex Academy. And then under server address, I'm going to paste that connection address that we have up here. Let's then click on done. It will then see if the server is online and then we can either click and join or just double click and it should automatically join our server. And as you can see, we are now connected. Let's go to console. Let's do OP Tabex Academy, press enter. And it says made Tabex Academy a server operator. Tabex Academy is my username. So if you're doing this for yourself, of course, use your own character username. Now that I am admin or operator, I can hold F3 and then tap F4 to cycle between the different game modes. I could, for example, set mine to creative. This way I can do many different things. For example, fly. And since we are operator, we are also able to run commands. So we could do things like time, set night to make it night. And there are many different commands that we can run. Let's do a quick overview of the dashboard. At the top, we have some server controls. We can start, stop and restart our server, or you can kill it if something is completely frozen. It's always highly recommended to try to just normally start or stop it before you kill your server. Up here, we have some stats of our network players and some of the performance of the server, like how much RAM are we actually currently using? And also, like I showed earlier, what version of Minecraft and paper are we running? We saw the console where we run the command. Players will show you the current players that are connected. You can also manage operators directly from your dashboard and give them different kinds of permissions. You can make a allow list and you have to turn this on in your server settings. If we click on server settings, we can change the max players. So let's keep this the same. And when we turn on the allow list, let's save this and go back to players, go to the allow list. You are now able to add players to this list and only then they are able to join the server. This doesn't really make sense for public servers, but this is very handy if you're trying to test something before pushing it to your main server. You can just add you or your team and anybody that needs to be there can join and anybody else is just not able to join. And you can also ban people either by player name or by IP. The file manager allows us to go through our files. For example, we will use this in a little bit to upload our Tabex plugin to our plugins folder. We can also very easily create backups directly from the dashboard. And once you have a backup, you can also use this to restore it. So let's create a backup, request backup targets completed successfully. Let's click on OK. So we can see our backup. We can see when it is created, the size. We can either directly deploy it or we have some other options under manage. Then for the one click installer, we currently have paper installed. We can change the version. Since we have the most current version, I'm not going to do this. 
But if you're running something else than the current version, you can change your game version and also the build for that version in this list. And there's also a plugins manager. We can see what we currently have installed, which is nothing. We can browse plugins. You can directly install plugins from this list and we can choose what list we want to have. This is neat. If your plugin is here, you can directly search for it as well. If you cannot find the plugin you're looking for, you can of course just still download the file and manually put it in the plugins folder using the file manager. I will demonstrate this in a little bit. We can set up some automated tasks. Automated tasks help you automate and maintain your server. For example, we can automatically restart the server on a specific time or date to ensure the highest performance possible. Then we go into game settings. We have some basic settings. We can also change our server icon. We can upload a file. When we connect it to our server, you can see that we have the icon over here and also the message of the day. These can all be changed. As you can see, it's all very visual. You just have to go through them one by one, read whatever it says you're selecting or choosing, and then set the setting to whatever you want to. We got some NPC settings as well. And then lastly, we have some player settings, and this is also where we set the allow list earlier. Database, I'm going to skip. If this is your first time setting up a server, you probably don't need to mess with the database anytime soon. We also have some Java settings. This depends on what version of Minecraft you're running. I would not mess with this unless you really know what you're doing and you need a specific version of Java. Then we have integrations. Here we can see, for example, Tabex. And then lastly, we can do manage instance. Here we can once again change our host name. We can also set it in streamer mode. This will hide some sensitive information. And we have some user permissions. So you could add multiple users. If you have people that are helping you manage your server, they just need to make a Nodecraft account. You can add them to this list and give them permission, for example, only to start or stop the server in case it crashes and you're, for example, sleeping. If you have a team member in a different time zone, you can only give them access to start the server. I would highly recommend just going through this and finding all the different settings that I didn't cover and see what other options you have. If you get stuck, bottom right, you can always contact support. Let's connect our Minecraft server to Tabex. On Tabex, we're gonna go to game servers on the left and then connect your first game server. Select the plugin. Let's give it a name. So I'm going to say Nodecraft server. We are going to use the Spigot or Bugget plugin. Let's go to the file manager. Inside of file manager, let's go inside of our plugins folder and then let's upload that jar file. As you can see here, we now have our bycraft x.jar file inside of our plugins folder. So I'm going to restart the server. So I'm just going to click restart. Yes, I'm sure. And then let's go inside of our console while this is booting up. And then let's copy our secret key enabling bycraft. It looks like this is a fresh setup and it even gives us the instruction. So we're just going to paste our secret key, press enter. And then it should say that this server is now registered as a server, Notecraft server for the web store. And then this is the name of my web store. And here in the top right, we can see it is now connected. So we just click continue, bottom right. Let's go to packages and let's add a new package. So I gave it a name, a description, and I also selected what category this package should be under. So just the packages category. I set a price and then scrolling down as a deliverable, I'm going to say game server commands. We then need to select what game server. So I'm going to say our Notecraft server. This is why it is important to properly name it. So if you have multiple servers, you know exactly what server is what. And then we need to add our first actual command. So when the package is purchased, first of all, I want to make it day. So I'm just going to run the exact same command, how I would run it inside of the game. Time set day. We don't have to do a slash. If I try to, it says packages commands should not start with a forward slash. So that's the only difference. Otherwise, it's exactly the same format. I'm going to add another command and I want to give myself a item. I'm going to use a command generator, especially for Minecraft. I'm going to say player name. Let's do Ted for now. As a item, let's do a bow or let's do a crossbow, one crossbow. And I'm not going to add anything. As you can see, there are many options. I'm just going to say generate command. Give that crossbow one. What we are going to do, we're going to take this and paste it and remove the slash. We can also click here on the right and we have some more options. So I'm going to say for the time set day, 
I even want to execute it if the player is offline. But for the crossbow, I want to make sure that the player is online. And we even have one required slot that we need to have to receive the crossbow before we execute this command. We already selected our server. If you have multiple servers, you can also select multiple and set those settings per command. So now when we click help here on the right and scroll down, we can see that for Minecraft, we need to use the name variable. So let's copy this and let's replace my name with the name variable. So let's click on create. So then to test this, we're not going to click on view web store on the right. We're just going to go to payments and we're going to create a manual payment in the top right. And then where it says customer, we're going to fill in the username of the player that needs to receive this package. So I'm going to say Tabex Academy, and then we have to select the package. So I'm going to say command delivery, make sure that we are connected to the server and let's make it night. So I'm going to say time set night. So that way, if the command gets run to make a day, we can clearly see that it has come in. And then let's click on create and let's go back to Minecraft. So now we just need to wait and then hopefully we should get a crossbow. And at the same time, it should become day. There we go. As you can see, basically at the same time, we got a crossbow and the time was changed to day. Exactly what we expected and what we wanted. Let's quickly look at the Overwolf app. So let's click on this and open up the Notecraft powered. Let's click on download. Let's open this up. This should open up our Overwolf app. There we go. And it's now installing Notecraft. Gonna make sure that our overlay is set to true for Minecraft. And as you can see in game, we now have two overlays. This is Outplayed. This is what I use to record in game sessions. We can ignore this for now. Let's focus on Notecraft. Let's log in and let's click on accept open Notecraft powered and it says woo. So now when we go back to the game, you can see here, we got this nice panel here. We can control our server directly from inside of the game. As you can see here, it says Alt N. So when we are in game, we can just press Alt N. We don't see this when we need it. We press Alt N. We bring up our Notecraft powered app. We can run commands. We can check the console. For example, you can check if your network and your RAM and your CPU are doing as expected. And of course, you can also open up your node panel directly from that app. It will just open up in your dashboard in case you need to do something that you cannot do in game. Very powerful. If anything is unclear, Notecraft wise, like I said earlier, contact Notecraft support. They are there to help you. If anything is unclear with Tabex, same thing, bottom right, you can contact our support. Or of course, feel free to leave a comment down below. As always, I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching and good luck with your Tebex store.